Hello all. Uh, a very warm welcome to the webinar on Hotso Toolkit for Anovia V6 by Steep Graph System. Uh, good morning to the participants from the Americas. Good afternoon for the participants from the Europe region. Uh, this is one among the uh, series of webinars uh, Steep Graph organized for the Dassault Systems PLM user community. And we are happy to present the Workflow Toolkit uh, to the community today. Uh, all participants are on mute, uh, so if you have any questions, uh, please post it on the questions panel and we can take it up at the end of the session. Uh, so we get started. Uh, um, okay, before we get into the agenda, a quick introduction about the speakers today. Myself, Sanjeev Varma, Director of Industry Solutions at Figra, responsible for marketing and business development. Come with uh, 15 plus years of experience in introducing PLM solutions to the manufacturing industry. I have with me my colleague, uh, PLM Practice Director, Mr. Avinash Manera Madhpurkar. He also comes with more than 15 years of experience in PLM deployments. He has patents in his name and uh, he leads our technology initiative. Hi, everyone. I also have with me Divya Biswas, who is our uh, Senior Solution Architect and uh, Product Manager. Uh, who's uh, involved in our uh, development activities and uh, also leads some of the uh, product initiatives. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Okay. So uh, the agenda for today is uh, a quick introduction about Steve Graph, our expertise on the DSPLM products, our offering, and then we deep dive into the workflow toolkit, which is all we're going to talk about in detail today's session, a summary, and then we take up the questions. Okay, so uh, a quick introduction about Steve Graph. Steve Graph Systems has been operational since 2008. We've been operational for more than six years and having offices globally in the United States and in India. In the United States, uh, we have our office in Michigan and our development center uh, and offshore center in Pune in India. What you see on the slide are the uh, offices uh, globally. Uh, uh, one in the U.S. and one in India. Uh, Steve Graph, uh, we would like to be known as a market as a productivity engineering company, helping companies be more productive with their investments on the PLM platform. Our focus is on the PLM technologies, uh, helping companies uh, benefit more from their investments. Our core offerings, starting from consulting, configuration and customization services, upgrades, maintenance and support services. We have served clients in 12 countries, uh, at least in this slide, that includes USA, France, Germany, Canada, UAE, and so on. Some key facts, we have 60 consultants, three of them positioned in the United States, and the rest uh, in India. We have served uh, 45 global customers to date. This includes companies who have presence in more than one country. Uh, we have served them in 12 countries, as mentioned earlier, and till date, done 125 projects and continue to add more. Uh, we have served clients across industry domains, uh, which I will highlight in the next slide, uh, some of the clients who have benefited. Our expertise has been primarily on the Dassault PLM products, that includes the brands like Enovia, Exali, Delmia, Netwise, Cridivia, Katia, and Solidworks. This slide highlights the clients who have benefited uh, from our services. In the transportation and mobility segment, uh, organizations like Alstom, Eaton, McLaren, BMW, Brose, these are some automotive suppliers who, whom we have served. Uh, at the OEM side, again, JLR, uh, Tesla, these are the companies uh, whom we have uh, served. In the aerospace and defense segment, we have companies like uh, Strata Aerospace, Austin Aerospace, Rockwell Collins, Parker, uh, who are again benefited from our services and our product offerings. Uh, in the industrial equipment space, so on, we have companies like Jacob Mueller, Fairbank Mose Engine, and the other industry segments, companies like 3M, KM Energy, Iberdorla, 
in the life science space, uh, pure paper, agile and technology, and uh, companies like TUV, Rhineland, and Australian Maritime Safety Authority. This slide uh, highlights our key acquisitions. Uh, we are a DESO authorized service provider partner. We got this acquisition in 2013. Of course, we've been serving clients on this platform since 2008. It was in 2013 we got the official partnership. In 2014, we were identified as one of the competent partners for system integration services, uh, for offering the one-click deployment services. So today we are listed in the PLM marketplace, and uh, we partner with uh, the DS ecosystem uh, players uh, to implement the one-click deployment. Uh, we were also announced as one of the most uh, competent partners for uh, transition to the 3D experience platform. This was done last year uh, during the Anovia Community Conference, and uh, we have been involved in extensively in supporting clients to move to the uh, 3D experience uh, platform. This slide uh, highlights our offerings uh, around the 3D experience uh, brand. To start with, on the implementation space, we have uh, competency in uh, implementation of the Anovia product. This may be uh, in the deployment of the various Anovia modules, the various uh, centrals as it was known in the older release, or uh, in the 3D experience uh, level, uh, the various uh, role-based offerings uh, for supporting the product planning, program management, global product development, or uh, quality and compliance related processes. We can implement the people and organization. Uh, this is one of the important uh, elements of uh, deployment, uh, uh, more specifically on the 3D experience brand. Uh, and of course, 3D dashboards uh, configuration. Uh, we are also uh, having competency in XRE implementation, both the XRE components within uh, the Enovia and also as a standalone application. We have been involved in uh, developing search-based applications, uh, the mashups, and the reports. We also have competency on uh, Delmia deployment, uh, in Delmia configuration and customization, or even integration with the other enterprise systems. Uh, we have done a couple of uh, upgrades. Some of them are listed here. This includes upgrades uh, from 11 to 2012X or 2012 to 15X. Uh, and of course, recently we completed an uh, upgrade to 15X for a German company, Blum. And uh, we, uh, we are known for our uh, efficient upgrade methodologies uh, and uh, uh, delivering it in a cost-effective manner. On the migration side, we have our migration framework to support the migration from uh, the legacy V5 Enovia versions to 3D experience. This could be either the Enovia V5 LCA or Smart Team V5, or a migration from EPDM to 3D experience, or even from other PLM platforms uh, to uh, the 3D experience uh, platform. Uh, in the supplier collaboration space, we can support in uh, helping you collaborate uh, with your suppliers. Uh, by providing the required uh, uh, solutions for data import and export or for exchange of CAD data between PLM platforms. Uh, in terms of supplier solutions, specifically to suppliers, uh, we have two offerings. One is Auto Lean for automotive suppliers, which has been uh, uh, delivered on the Enovia platform with specific solutions to comply to the industry standards. For example, uh, in the Auto Lean solution, we have functionalities to support the PS 169509 requirements and uh, regarding the ATP uh, processes. Similarly, for the aerospace suppliers, we have solutions which we have delivered uh, on the Enovia platform to support the AS 9700 standards. This can help in the program and quality management processes and also the first article inspection process management. As a system integrator, uh, we have the competency to uh, provide consulting and integration with uh, various enterprise systems. And finally, uh, we have our own products, of which one of the products we're going to talk in detail more. Let me give a quick snapshot of all the products which we offer to the community. The workflow toolkit, which we will talk more in detail today. Uh, a quick snapshot of the other tools we have. The implementation accelerator. Uh, it's a tool which can help in uh, quick implementation of the uh, Enovia platform. Uh, this provides uh, wizards and uh, user-friendly interface for the developer to quickly roll out new functionalities uh, on the Enovia platform uh, specific to whichever is the release level. 
uh, we have a scenario tracker. This is uh, primarily to, to uh, analyze uh, any issues with the user's report. Uh, the tracker can come out with uh, reports which give details regarding the user inputs, the stack information, and any uh, permission related issues. This is uh, very useful to provide uh, the uh, L1 and L3 support for your business users. We have a performance profiler. This helps in analyzing the performance of the various Anovia uh, 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 functionalities which has been delivered or developed. Uh, it gives you details regarding timelines for each of the uh, triggers which are happening in the background and you can further optimize your uh, development. We have an FCS uh, file reconciliation tool. This is primarily to reconcile between various FCS servers and to make sure you have a consistent vault across your multiple sites. And finally, uh, we have a migration framework. This is to support migrations uh, from uh, legacy PLM or uh, legacy databases to the Anovia platform. We use the same framework for migrating customers from Smart Team or EPDM to V6. It has an extraction component, a transformation component, and finally a loader component which loads the data into uh, V6. So at this stage, uh, I'll hand it over to my colleague Avinash to give you more details on the workflow toolkit. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Sanjeev, for uh, introduction of the uh, uh, organization. And uh, let me now uh, go into the details of the uh, tool itself. So uh, basically, I'll be talking uh, more about the tool. And uh, what we are going to do here is uh, uh, two things. One is uh, first, uh, I will give a little bit of a summary of uh, what tool looks like and what what we can do with it. And uh, as a part of demonstration, we'll look at the functionalities it provides, and then we'll drive into the uh, presentation, which talks about the features of the tool in more detail. The workflow toolkit, um, so basically any workflow is defined as a set of activities or tasks to be performed by various users in order to achieve the defined objective and goal. Uh, the uh, workflow uh, has to be done in a way in an in organization so that the uh, business process is optimized. There is a collaboration amongst the various users and uh, in in totality, it should achieve the, uh, the productivity of the entire business process. In Innovia, uh, there are certain areas which addresses the space near to the business process implementation. So Innovia has routes. Innovia has life cycles. Okay. Uh, when it comes to the routes, the routes are not as user friendly to implement a business process. Uh, for example, it does not allow us the looping in the process. It does not allow the logical branching. Which branch to be done uh, in a workflow that cannot be selected automatically? So there are certain limitations which doesn't allow us to map a business process in Innovia using routes effectively. Innovia has the life cycles. However, in the life cycle, it is meant to manage an object state. It is not meant for the business process management. And what we mean by that is uh, it cannot do the looping and so on. Okay, so its purpose is different. So effectively, there is there is no effective way in Innovia so that any business process can be quickly configured and implemented and rolled out. Now, when we look at uh, uh, workflow toolkit, uh, there are two distinct areas. Okay, one is um, the process owner who defines the how the workflow it should be. So definition of tasks and so on and everything, the, the process owner does that. It create, he creates in the system. Once he makes that process available to the users, then the users use the uh, defined workflow and perform set of activities. You know, those come onto them. Okay. There is a very, very clear distinction in between the roles. Now, when it comes to the process owner, what it does with, with workflow toolkit, what it does? Okay, so he uh, analyzes first the business process, then 
he creates a template for the business process and as a part of the process itself creates creating the template he creates the which are the types that this particular workflow template should govern for example i want to govern the rfq process and rfq is the type and this is the template it should govern which are the tasks those are part of this particular workflow who are the roles who are supposed to perform a certain task for example there are say 10 tasks in a particular workflow then who are the roles or who are the users who are supposed to perform these tasks checklist for example a particular task has to be done then there has to be set of instructions okay what are the things to be done in this task what are the things to be mandatorily performed in this task that is called the checklist so when we are defining the workflow, when a process owner is defining the workflow, he is defining this checklist as well. He is defining, he defines the flow of tasks. For example, there will be a set of tasks, those need to run in series. There are a set of tasks, those need to run in parallel. So definition of these flow is one of the activity. Considering the events, for example, let us say there are 10 steps, there are 10 uh, activities, tasks in a workflow, then what should happen? For example, when the task number three is done, it should send a notification to somebody. So this is the end action. Okay. So what uh, for for certain events in the task, what should be what should happen? That is the definition. And of course, the decision in terms of what you know, there are certain uh, tasks for which. Uh, uh, the decisions should be taken automatically based on the what is data in the system. For example, if the code is greater than 100,000K, then the uh, notification should go to head of engineering. Okay, so this is our sort of the automation. Okay, so that automation has to be defined. And once all these things are done, then the workflow is activated. Activated means it, you know it is available for the users of uh, you know, v 6 to use it. So this is what this summary of what the process owner will do. Now, when it comes to the end user, so end user could be um, any Innovia user who is part of that business process. And he will do one of the tasks in that business process to complete the overall business process. So what it does as a part of this uh, usage of the workflow toolkit is uh, he, uh, for example, he will create an object. Let us say it is an RFQ. He creates an RFQ. Okay. So creation of object as a part of his daily work he will do. Then with that it can automatically create the, it can automatically in the background create the workflow or he has a choice to say that okay, now let me start the process. So he will instantiate the workflow. Okay. Then as a part of the workflow he will receive set of tasks. So he can view the tasks, those are assigned to him. He can see the instructions in the task and then he can accept the task. For example, this is a task that can be done by any senior manufacturing engineer. And if I am one of the manufacturing engineers, I will accept the task. So he can accept the task and he can perform the task. He can complete the task. At the time of completion, he can define, okay, what are his comments about the task. He can define, should the business process move forward, which is next task or there is, a, there is an issue, for example, uh, he is reviewing some certain thing and he, he thinks that okay, it has to go backward. So he defines you know, which way it has to go and then he completes the activity. So these are, this is a summary of what an end user will do in totality. Okay? Now, uh, uh, when we look in the system, these things will be more uh, clear. Okay? Now, as a set of uh, as a set of uh, workflow, I would like to think about uh, one business process. And let us think of one business process and let me look at that. Let us say that in an organization, uh, we are implementing a business process. Now, as an example for this demonstration, for this uh, webinar, we have taken an example that RFQ management process. Okay. 
So let us quickly summarize and look at what the process is. For example, there is an organization who receives the RFQ from its customer and uh, the organization would like to bid for it. So the, the first step is he, it, it does the feasibility study and the manufacturing engineers analyze the, uh, the, the tools and processes and special processes in that RFQ. Then the identification of the special process and raw materials is the next step. Then the costing and estimation of the uh, RFQ itself and based on what are the uh, uh, activities to be done. Then at the same time there will be uh, in the RFQ there will be certain areas for example there will be some special processes for which uh, the organization needs to uh, get the quotation from its suppliers. Okay. Then using these quotations update that into the estimations and consolidate the estimation, review and approve the estimation internally by the uh, head of engineering, by the uh, internal uh, senior engineers, then creation of the quotation, okay, and once the quotation is created then submit it to the customer and there will be certain iterations of the quote between the customer and the uh, organization and then there will be uh, uh, customer will evaluate the quotation and it will be either won or lost. Okay. In case of one, then there will be process. For example, the, the project in the system has to be created, then define the cross-functional team who will work on this project, define the root part, okay. or if it is the lost, then you know what is the gap analysis, why it was lost. So this is a business process that uh, you know, typically when any organization would like to uh, bid for uh, uh, any order, the build to print order, so this process will happen. And there will be of course uh, some steps which will be in detail based on the organization, but let us say as an example this is a business process. And what we can think of is, uh, you know, with, with workflow toolkit as uh, one of the tool available on top of Innovia, how is that it is easier to build this kind of process? Okay, so, uh, For this uh, uh, demonstration, we will be demonstrating this feature onto Innovia 15X. So the, on this uh, system that I am right now referring, uh, workflow toolkit as a product has been deployed. It is on 15X. However, in case uh, the customers are using earlier versions, for example, 13X, 12X, and so on, the tool supports the previous versions also. Okay. Now, uh, when we have the uh, workflow toolkit installed, we'll see certain. Okay, let me log in into the system. Okay. In the system, there are two areas. For example, if you see here, you will see smart workflow and you will see create workflow template and create workflow process as the commands. Similarly, on the left hand side, once the workflow toolkit is installed, there will be two commands in here, workflow templates and process. Okay. Now, I am the uh, process engineer who is going to define the process. So I will create a workflow template. I say create workflow template. I will give the label for it. Let us say demo workflow template say two. And description, let us say that instead of demo, let us say demo RFQ. Description is uh, something, a RFQ process. Now this particular business process will drive which type of object? In our case, it will be RFQ. Then if this particular workflow template is default for this type, yes. For the scope of this workflow template, it is not for any specific project organization, but 
for holistically for all nice it done okay so as soon as the workflow template is created in the content panel you will see some graphical area like this okay by default there are two tasks start and end okay. i can move around and so on then i can create tasks okay for example let's take the same example okay i'm going to start and i say receive rfq is task number 1 so i say create task RFQ. Some description I give. The task is normal, okay. And I leave rest of the things as it is. I may not worry too much about minor details. And I say create this task. Okay. Now the task is created. This you can see the step here. I can move around here. And what I'm going to say is that okay, this task has to be done after. so i connect this okay then i say that okay my next task is feasibility study okay so i create next and i say feasibility study okay i leave rest of the things as it is i'll not worry too much about it step number task number 2 i say that this task is after receiving the rfq okay and like this you can define the entire process for for sake of this particular small workflow i say that my flow is very simple and it is straight forward when i define this i can change the location of this task and make this particular flow easier for me i keep on saving the flow as i am defining it okay now we define the layout of the flow now what i do is i double click this rfq or if you are rfq which opens the details about this particular task which is review rfq what i can do here is that for this particular task who is supposed to perform this task so i define that in the assignee this task should be done by role key account manager so key account manager is the person who is going to receive the rfq documentation from the customer he is responsible for it then in the checklist okay i can define what is the checklist for this task for example get customer specific requirements okay this is an activity to be done in this task and i say that this particular checklist for the task is mandatory so i can define that i can define set of actions so let me say just done and define one single action okay i close this so i have defined the checklist and and the assignment i can also define what should happen when this particular task is either started or completed for example when the feasibility study is completed send a notification to somebody for example notify the leader okay so i can say that feasibility study notification this is this is an action i'm defining and saying that this is a step number 1 and done okay so for this step which is step task number 1 which is the receive rfq we have defined the who is going to do it what are the checklist what are the actions similarly we can go and say i now double click this feasibility study and exactly on the same lines i define who is going to do it assign me what is the checklist for him or her and what are the actions for him and like that so this way we can define the complete business flow now uh, right now we are stopping here for 
defining. Whereas if I look in the system, for example, if I look at say in the system, there are set of workflow templates which are defined. For example, I can I am right now go, going to open this RF2 template one. And now what you see is that okay, this is the end-to-end -end business process which is defined. For example, let us see RFQ do the feasibility study, identify special processes and raw material, then do in parallel two things. One is create costing and estimation, and also in parallel get the supplier reports. And once both of them are done, review the estimation sheet, approval of the estimation, create the code. Submit the code to the customer, then either win it or lose, lose it. Once it is won, create the project, we define the CFT cross function team, create the root part, or else, or if it is a must, create gap analysis. What you could see is now that we initially we define the business process like this, and then in the system we are defining the exact same business process and we are defining the details out of this process. For example, in this case, the parallel things, how it can happen, okay, which are the tasks. For example, let us say that uh, if we look at, uh, say, identify special processes, okay, then you will see that, okay, the senior manufacturing engineer should do this. Then there are two things, for example, defining all the requirements required raw material and defining all the special processes are the checklists and those are mandatory okay, and any actions required. Okay. So this way you define the workflow and you know, that's where the business process is mapped. Now uh, once the business process is mapped, you know what we have seen so far is role number one, which is the business process owner has defined the entire business flow uh, sequence and tasks and checklists and everything. Once he has defined everything, he will say activate. There is a button to activate and deactivate. Right now, you know, it is already activated. Okay. So this business workflow is activated. It is available for the end users to use it. Now comes the part of the end users. Okay. So I will be now playing the part of the end user. Okay. So I, I go here and I am looking at, let us say, one of the RFQ. So I will skip one of the RFQ that is available in the system. Let us say that say test one is one RFQ available in the system. Okay. Uh, for this queue, uh, there are of course there are various commands. There is one left hand side command that is available, smart workflow process. Okay. Here what I can say is that create a workflow process. Okay. I'm going to define that okay, which is the template based on which the process has to create it. And I say RFQ template one is the template that should be used. Okay, and the rest of the details are okay. right now. As a user, I have created the business process. However. It was certainly possible that system automatically creates a workflow for you. For example, as soon as RFQ is created, create a business process, workflow process, and start it. So that was certainly possible. Okay. Now, what we'll do is um, we look at, you know, as a user, what are the things that will happen once the workflow is started. Okay. What we can right now see is that this workflow is already status is started. It is based on this template, and it is driving, you know, this. Let me open up the second view, for example. Okay. So this is the display of the instance, the right now for test one where it is. So right now it is it is already started and it is right now in the receive RFQ task. Okay. As a user, what I do is I'm in the system. I go and say that give me a listing of my tasks. Okay. 
when the user and I'm clicking say my task on the daily basis I come in the system my first thing that I do is I look at my task see I see here in my workflow task one task called receive RFQ okay this particular task is right now assigned to me because I am one of the key account managers okay and then I'm supposed to work on it okay so what I say is that okay first is if its status is to be accepted so I say that okay I accept this task there could be say five account managers and one of them who is me I accept this task I accept this task then I go to the details out of it and understand what the task is for example in this task it is uh, I'm supposed to receive the RFQ and uh, I'm supposed to get uh, customer inputs so I get all those things and once I'm 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 convinced that yes, this task is done. I go here and say that okay, I'm going to complete this task. Okay. So when I'm completing this task, what system says is okay, uh, there is one checklist or the task, get customer specific requirements. So have you done that? Have you really all this, uh, done all these things? I say yes, I have done that. Okay. After this, what should be the next step? Okay, it should go to the feasibility study. And who is responsible for it? It is a senior manufacturing engineer. And I say that okay, all customer specific required all CSR are available. Okay. okay, and I say this is complete. Okay. As soon as it is complete, okay. Next task get activated feasibility study. Okay, and it is it will come to manufacturing engineer, senior manufacturing engineer. Right now for demo system, this user has all the roles. That's the reason this user is getting. If I look at my this workflow, what I see now is that feasibility study is right now active. The receive RFQ green is done. The one in yellow feasibility study is active, and the rest of the tasks are you know, in green. Exactly the same lines. Right now, I'm senior manufacturing engineer. We're supposed to do this feasibility study. I understand the detail out of it. I do the things. Okay. I attach the feasibility study document to the RFQ, this particular uh, uh, test one RFQ. And right now, I'm not going to show that. Okay. But let us analyze from business process perspective that okay, I have done all the things in this. And when I'm done with this, I say that okay, first is I accept this. That okay, I'm going to do this feasibility study. And once I'm done attaching all the documents, visibility study documents to the RFQ, I say that okay, I'm going to complete this task. As a part of task completion, the system pro, you know prompts me and asks me, okay, have you completed the check of material availability? Have you completed the uh, material process visibility? Are, are you done with that? So I say yes, I'm done. What is the next task? Is to define the special process and raw materials, and it is who is responsible for it? You, I say any comments with respect to feasibility study comment, whatever the comments I want to add it and I say yes. As soon as I say complete, okay, the next task will get activated, it will get assigned to respective people, okay. And if I look at the workflow, if I look at this process, it will show that okay. My RF, this RFQ is done, feasibility study is done, and right now it is identify special process trauma, okay, and so on. Okay. There is some interesting case after this is that, for example, there are two tasks: create costing and estimation and get supply reports. These are two parallel activities. So once this step is done, these two tasks will run in parallel, and then the next for the next task, which is a review estimation sheet, unless both are done, it will not be able to. So possible to perform this task. So this is example of the parallel task. So we are seeing the series task, we are, we are seeing the parallel task, and like this you can define it. Okay. At this point, I think it summarizes what are the activities um, uh, the end user does. Okay. And uh, it, it is pretty intuitive in terms of for end user all time uh, what is available is what is my task, what are the checklist, okay, and where it stands the entire flow. Okay, uh, with respect to this RFQ, and uh, what is the next step for somebody? And I can define whether the process should go ahead or it should go back. 
you know, based on you know the, the, the inputs available to you. Okay. So that is a little bit summary of you know what the tasks to be done by the uh, end users. Okay. In the slides, okay, so I, I stop here in terms of the demonstration. Okay. Uh, in terms of the slides, I will just run through them. It talks exactly what we discussed. Okay, so you're just giving the glimpse out of this. Okay, so which are the tasks of process owner? Okay, so this is uh, defining certain screenshots. How do you create the workflow template? How you see the dashboard? How you create the tasks? How you create the checklists? How you assign who is supposed to work on a task? Then from process owner perspective, how you define the set of the tasks, whether sequential or the parallel, which are the you know actions or events that should happen when the task is either complete or started and so on. Okay. You know what should be the next step. And there, are, there are certain times the automated decision you need to take, and uh, for example, if the cost or if the RFQ quotation value is greater than a million, then it has to be approved by so and so, so that you know that automation rule you can define in the workflow using the expressions, and then you activate this. Okay. Whereas the end user activity, that is as we are summarizing, create the workflow process, and then uh, define the content, uh, accept the task, perform the task. Uh, Okay, if we go slow because the screen uh, might come a little late to you. Okay, uh, to validate that all the things that define the checklist are done, add any comment to the task, define you know what is the next step. Either it should go forward in the business process or it should go backward. Okay, and so on. Okay. Uh, in the workflow, you can always see the history of the uh, entire flow, for example, who all people have worked on this and signed on this and so on, there is a report for that. Okay, okay so I'm just running through screenshots because we, because we have already discussed those. Okay. So here is, I was referring to a sign of history wherein for entire business process for that particular say RFQ, what has happened, who has done what, when, okay, so that is possible. Uh, now, uh, this particular slide uh, talks a little bit on the technical side of it. For example, what is the schema, what is the mapping out of these business types to manage this uh, uh, workflow business process. So, this is a little summary of this. Okay. So, this uh, uh, concludes the quick demonstration of the business process. And uh, I would like now to hand over uh, this presentation to uh, Mr. Sanjeev for some reason. Sorry. Thank you, Avinash. Uh, I hope you got a good insight into the product's capabilities. Uh, you saw a live demo and a summary of the key functionalities. Uh, let me take it forward uh, to highlight uh, uh, some of the benefits and uh, some details on the pricing before we open the sessions for the question. So the key features and benefits, uh, primarily you can design your complex workflow graphically. You have already seen that during the demonstration. Uh, the graphical interface uh, where you can visualize your entire business process. You have an activity completion dialog box with checklists for task completion to ensure that uh, your team members are participating in the uh, tasks and they complete it and they have a checklist. You have a workflow sign off history. You can control the life cycle of the content object through task events. You are in this process you are actually automating some of the complex task sequence by having triggers and linking uh, various activities. You track the progress of the task sequence effectively. Uh, Avina showed you how uh, in the graphical uh, dashboard you are able to visualize the status of the workflow at any point of time. Uh, it's easy to implement as a part of the delivery of the tool. We provide training to make sure your uh, business process owners and the end users are, uh, are able to quickly start using the tool. The technology used is the standard Enovia implementation techniques. 
on which uh, based on which we have uh, uh, developed uh, this tool. So that uh, highlights the key features and benefits. Uh, and let me now uh, proceed ahead to highlight on the pricing. Um, and Mr. mentioned that it supports uh, the interface supports all the uh, cross platforms, the Windows, Linux, and Mac environments, as, as and the web browsers, uh, all popularly supported by Anovia, are supported by Workflow Toolkit also. As far as the licensing and uh, dependencies are concerned, the Workflow Toolkit licensing is uh, user-based. It can be deployed on any existing Anovia stack without affecting the existing processes. And the prerequisites for running Workflow Toolkit is uh, the 3D Experience PCS role license for 2015X or 14X, or Anovia CPF license for 2013X and a lower release level. What you saw today demo on the 3D Experience platform, uh, the Workflow Toolkit also supports uh, the older release level. Uh, if any of you are running on 2011X, 12X, or 13X. As far as the pricing is concerned, we have a very interesting uh, model uh, to help clients to start adopting this tool. Uh, we have defined uh, five user packs. Uh, to start with, it can be a 10 user pack, or you can go for a 25 user pack, and then you have the 100, 500, and the 1,000 user pack. The every, every user pack uh, mandates the need for uh, purchase of a workflow admin console. Uh, that's a one-time investment uh, for the admin console to configure your workflow. And further, for each of the users, you need to go for the user pack. And the per user pricing would change uh, based on the user pack uh, the client would go for. Uh, for higher user packs, you would have discounts, the volume discounts, which would be applicable. For example, uh, a 10 user pack, uh, you would have to invest on the $10,000 workflow admin console and uh, $120 per user uh, for the 10 user pack. Uh, you would get a more attractive pricing if you go for a higher user pack. For example, if you go for a 500 user pack, you would get uh, the per user at uh, 90 US dollars. Uh, the pricing follows a PLC and ALC model. The primary license charge entitles the customer to use the toolkit. And the ALC entitles the customer to download all updates to the software and receive any defect-related support for a period of one year. Further on, for subsequent years, you need to only uh, pay for the annual license charge for the maintenance uh, support. Uh, I would like to uh, end the session uh, with a quick value proposition on what Skipgraph uh, offers to our clients uh, before we open up the session for questions. I would like to emphasize uh, PLMs are expertise proven expertise in the last six years. We have served uh, OEMs and uh, Tire 1 and Tire 2 suppliers across industry segments in, in uh, 12 countries, as I highlighted at the beginning of the presentation. We are known for our agility and the quality of our deliverables, and I would like to emphasize that that is our differentiator. Our clients have come back to us because of the speed at which we have responded to their requirements, and of course, most importantly, the quality of each of these deliverables. And finally, I would like to emphasize we have served clients across industry domains, and so we have the experience that our consultants have served industry domains like aerospace, automotive, pharma, engineering, and high tech. At this stage, I would like to open up the uh, session for any questions. Please post them in the questions panel, and we'll be happy to uh, answer them. We have a question uh, which asks for whether the tool is used to manage or root workflows only or other Inovio objects workflow. Uh, yes, so uh, basically this tool is uh, meant to manage uh, any uh, Inovio objects. For example, in this uh, today's session, we looked at RFQ management and the object was RFQ. Uh, somebody would like to implement the business process with respect to, for example, uh, a document review business process and in that case the document object is the uh, 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 the object which is driving this. So it is very much possible to uh, implement this uh, uh, workflow for any Inovia object, for any business process and it has nothing to do with the routes. Uh, 
we, we, we are not using the routes here. The next question is, is there an automatic selection of the next task? Okay. Uh, what is certainly possible is uh, to define uh, uh, the next task automatically, which is certainly possible. However, uh, there is a specific always a requirement. For example, when the task is a review, uh, unless the uh, the process can go forward or backward, and that's the reason there is always a selection required. But having said that, if there is a task which is uh, defined as the automatic task, in that case, it you know it 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 don't need to define what is the next task. The uh, yeah, another question we have is: uh, Is it possible to see the overall progress of the running processes of all the running processes? Uh, uh, certainly, a report can be made available which says that okay, uh, in the system there are these many active uh, workflows which are running, and here is the status of that, and they are driving these entities. For example, these are the RFPs which are driving. So this report uh, it can be very quickly built if there is a requirement. Uh, the next question is, uh, is it able to see who has what task and how long a task is open, does the progress is held up? Uh, certainly, uh, this data is available and uh, this also can be in an interesting uh, report and uh, this report can be very well built very quickly uh, to uh, show which are the tasks which are uh, uh, crossing the timeline and uh, any actions to be taken for that. So that report can be very well uh, quickly built. So since we have some time, I'll take some more questions. Uh, we have a question on uh, can the inputs for the task to be added from existing documents? Uh, uh, for, for this question, uh, it is a little bit unclear in terms of uh, uh, whether the task uh, uh, inputs for the task be added from existing documents. Uh, Okay, this this question is not very clear. Uh, uh, maybe what I can answer is that uh, uh, this particular workflow template uh, can define any uh, uh, type of document. For example, uh, if you want to drive a set of attached documents, for example, uh, when particular step uh, uh, step happens or a task happens, we want to promote set of uh, documents attached to this uh, uh, say RFQ, then it is certainly possible. Uh, okay. A related question, which was uh, regarding the reports. Uh, the question is, uh, who needs to build the reports? Okay. Uh, basically, uh, to build the report, uh, uh, Steve Graf can certainly help as a part of the professional services. For example, as a part of the uh, uh, the as a part of the tool implementation, we can support for the configuring one of the business process. We can help you as well as if, for example, there are certain specific reports to be built. No, we can provide you those. Uh, we can build and provide you those uh, reports. Yeah. There was a question uh, regarding my earlier comment on our, on our capability to support upgrades. The question was whether we can support upgrades from 13x to 15x, and whether uh, we can support uh, upgrade of a highly configured and customized environment. Yes, uh, certainly the uh, upgrade of the workflow toolkit from one release to next release is possible. What happens is as a part of AMC. For example, let us say that there is a customer who uh, who is who has bought 13x, and uh, you know uh, the workflow toolkit is deployed and implemented. Okay, and let us say after say two years, uh, the customer would like to go for 15x. Steve Graph would provide a script which will upgrade uh, the workflow from 13x to 15x, and uh, uh, it will take care of all the existing running workflows. So that will be possible. And just to uh, clarify further. Uh, uh, I, yes, I guess the question one was related to whether the workflow toolkit can be upgraded, uh, but I also assume the question was whether we can support the upgrades in general from 13x to 15x. Uh, yes. So uh, in terms of the upgrades, uh, for sure we can support on the upgrades. We have been doing today various uh, upgrades for various customers. So uh, uh, today we have uh, done uh, seven upgrades so far, and uh, we are actively involved in 15x upgrades. So yes, uh, we can certainly support on the upgrades. So we have five minutes more, and uh, let's take a few more questions. How can we add inputs and deliverables to a task today in a work breakdown structure? Uh, I am able to add inputs and deliverables. 
Okay, okay. So um, for for, a, for any task, uh, 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 for example, uh, if there is a deliverable that is created as a part of the task, potentially that should be added as a part of philosophy of this um, uh, workflow management. It has to be added to the original entity. For example, uh, let us say feasibility study was done and feasibility study document is created. Now this feasibility study has to be attached to a RFQ. Okay, and RFQ has to take care of that. Okay. So it is it is it should not be tied to the task, but it should be tasked, you know, tied to the reference object itself. That is the philosophy of uh, this framework. Okay. Um, the question was that uh, is the workflow modifiable when it is active to remove or add tasks? Uh, basically, uh, workflow template uh, is sort of frozen once you make it published. Okay, so uh, when when the workflow process is running, it is it is not uh, advisable to modify it. What is certainly possible is uh, you can create the copy of the template. You can edit certain things, and uh, uh, you know once that uh, process is well defined, then you can publish. The business process owner can publish that. And henceforth, for the new objects, that uh, template will be usable. Okay. And there was a question whether uh, we can get more details regarding uh, the presentation which we have shared today. Yes, definitely. Uh, post the session, uh, we would be happy to share some of the slides and uh, more details as required by you. And uh, I guess uh, we could answer most of the questions and I see one more just coming in and since we have last two minutes maybe we can take up this one also. Can we cancel a process when it is running? Uh, right now as a part of the framework once the business process has started uh, uh, we cannot uh, stop in the middle uh, the business process. Uh, what is uh, certainly possible as I mentioned was that if any modification is required we need to create a new uh, template to copy and then we go from there. Great. Thank you, Anash. Uh, thank you all uh, for participating in this webinar. I hope uh, all of you got a good insight about the tool capabilities and how it can uh, support your business requirements. Uh, we would be happy to be in touch with you and understand more your uh, priorities and how this tool can help you in your business operations uh, with your investments on Inovia. Thank you all. Uh, have a nice day.